Romanoff, Head of Healthcare Content and Edison Group, and I have the pleasure of catching up with Dr. Phil Gomez, CEO of SEGA Technologies. Welcome. Thanks, Sue. Good to be here. Great. Um, so I have a few questions here. Uh, the first one is, um, SEGA's had some exciting news flow. Maybe it would be helpful to kind of recap those and then also provide a brief background on the company and TPOX product. Yeah, absolutely. So appreciate you taking the time today. So let's start with the product TPOX. It is an antiviral drug. Uh, it's a pill. It's taken twice daily for 14 days. And it was developed in collaboration with the U.S. government going back to the early 2000s uh, for the treatment of smallpox, which was a, a it was and is a very large threat from a bioterrorism or accidental release. Um, it's a disease that has a 30% fatality rate, highly transmissible. So we worked with the U.S. government to develop that product. Um, it was approved in 2018 by the U.S. FDA uh, for the treatment of smallpox. Um, and we also have approval in Health Canada for the treatment of smallpox. But it turns out the drug has broad activity in what is called orthopox viruses. So that's a family of viruses. It happens to include monkeypox, which we've heard an awful lot about the past few months, includes something called cowpox and, and vaccinia. So post-2018, we also sought approval in Europe and ultimately in the UK, where we got approval for uh, smallpox, monkeypox, uh, cowpox, and vaccinia. Um, both of those approvals were really around the treatment of orthopox viruses and animal data. So we had outstanding animal data showing protection of monkeypox in non-human primates, and that was the basis for approval. So we always knew if there was an ever an outbreak of smallpox or monkeypox, we want to confirm the efficacy data that we saw in animals. So um, that's a big part of what we're focused on right now um, with the current monkeypox outbreak. So that's interesting. So um, T-pox is effective for smallpox, but you can also treat patients with monkeypox. Uh, how has the monkeypox outbreak impacted your business and demand? Yeah, so that's a that's a great question, Sue. So historically, going back to 2011, we got our first contract to sell TPOC. So that was actually before FDA approval. The U.S. government is allowed to purchase um, products before FDA approval that they think have a high probability of approval. So um, we're an unusual pharma company in that we sell product to governments. Um, we sell products prior to approval. And we've been a commercial company selling TPOX going back to 2011. We started delivering to the US government in 2013. As we gained FDA approval, we added Canada as a customer. Uh, again, they were buying it for stockpiling in the event of a smallpox outbreak. And um, what has really changed now is the awareness of the orthopox family. So with the outbreak of monkeypox, uh, we've had dozens of countries contact us. We've sold over 10 countries currently. And that's really focused on the current monkeypox outbreak. Unfortunately, this can be a severe disease. Um, it's, it's been found in um, incredible large number of countries around the globe right now. Um, there's been some deaths associated with it, fortunately not a lot, uh, but our drug is uh, highly active against monkeypox in the animal model. So we've been fortunate uh, to have sales to international governments as part of the immediate monkeypox response. But we certainly think that's gonna evolve over time. Yeah, another interesting thing is the, the FDA set up a uh, special protocol for TPOX in the US. What does that mean for SIGA? Yeah, so in the U so there's been a variety of ways to access uh, TPOX. In the US, there are 1.7 million courses in the strategic national stockpile, uh, but the label is approved for smallpox, not for monkeypox. So the CDC in consultation with FDA made TPOX available for free to patients by using what's called an expanded access um, investigational new drug protocol. So it's essentially a clinical protocol that if you have monkeypox and you qualify uh, for treatment, you would be monitored and followed. And the CDC has published, uh, I think over 300 patients now that have received the drug. It doesn't have a control arm. So there's no placebo arm in that protocol. But what we have seen is, is, is uh, no serious adverse events and we've seen patients reporting that within a few days, their symptoms seem to stop progressing or shrink. But again, not a control group, but it's a way to gather data during an outbreak because the drug was not approved for monkeypox. 
Okay. And, and, and part of your uh, strategic plan includes international expansion. What are you seeing there, especially with these monkeypox cases increasing? Yeah, so to date, um, we've announced over $76 million of orders this year alone uh, on the international front. Some of that's to existing customers. Some of that is to uh, a lot of new customers. And some of those customers purchased an initial amount based on the monkeypox outbreak and then came back and purchased additional amounts. So what I think it has highlighted is the international sales market for us is an orthopox virus market. So um, there's obviously some uh, customers who are saying we have a few monkeypox cases, we want to get an amount of drug to make sure we're ready for that. We don't know how this monkeypox outbreak is going to evolve. We've seen some encouraging data based on probably uh, modification of behavior that has reduced some of the growth rate there, but we don't know where the outbreak is going to go. So we think people will also think about what do governments need to have product to be ready in case the virus became more transmissible or cases increase, but really our market is orthopox viruses broadly. So um, the UK, the US, in fact, the president's uh, pandemic uh, strategy that came out last fall said, let's prepare for families of viruses because that way we have broadly active products. We can uh, look at a virus family efficiently and, and smallpox unfortunately is the leader in one of the most deadly families, families of viruses out there. So we anticipate customers are gonna focus on monkeypox think about the long-term plan there, but then um, we'll have to pivot to a broader orthopox preparedness uh, where we do need more vaccine, more antiviral drug, more diagnostics, because if there ever was a smallpox outbreak, it would really be catastrophic. So do you think that impacts the timing and the level of expansion in your strategic plan? I, I do. We've, um, we've had a lot of conversations with customers over the years and one of the things that always pops up is governments have a lot of priorities. So they see this as a priority, but they ultimately have to go to their parliament or their Congress to get funding and put it into the prioritization process. What monkeypox has shown us is that the orthopox family can show up on any country's doorstep, um, not necessarily unexpectedly, but very rapidly. And there's no way to order product or to develop a drug. You really have to have it um, in your country, in your region, uh, to deploy rapidly if you want to have an impact on the outbreak. So I do think that has elevated the number of conversations. It's provided new urgency. Uh, it's a reminder uh, of what can happen with these outbreaks specifically. And the great news, which is we have an antiviral drug, we have some vaccines. Um, and so uh, it really would be a shame if countries were not prepared. Um, and so we have those conversations a lot, both on the short term and I think more importantly on the long-term for, for preparedness. So what are governments doing to address the monkeypox? I mean, are they stockpiling like the US or, or how does that impact Sika in general? Yeah, I would say right now, um, certainly the US and Canada um, stockpiled T-pox prior to the outbreak. Um, some countries are building a stockpile, some are responding to the initial outbreak. Um, I think we're going to have to get through this initial wave to help uh, countries really plan for the larger stockpiling that's going to be required to make sure they're ready should a, another outbreak occur or we have uh, something more as much more transmissional as smallpox. So the stockpiling conversations, I think, will take uh, a little longer and be the next conversation we have. But I think the urgency of the current outbreak means we're going to have those conversations uh, and are having those conversations right now. We've already seen some countries uh, make moves on that. So uh, we'll continue to monitor and work hard. So, so the PEP solution is a big catalyst, right? So could you help us understand what it is, potential timing, and maybe the impact to future sales? Yeah, so uh, this goes back to um, our FDA advisory committee back in 2018. So smallpox, um, and monkeypox, as we've seen, are about asymptomatic for 14 days. So you may get infected, not really know you have it until you start getting uh, a very nondescript fever, ultimately rash, and then, and then the lesional disease. After you get infected, or at least a few days after, the vaccines are not anticipated to be effective at all at mitigating how the disease progresses. And so one of the things that was very clear, and certainly our government colleagues in the US government has always anticipated that 
you would want to be able to give our drug prophylactically in a post-exposure setting. So someone who may or may not have been exposed, if it's too late for a vaccine, you would want to treat them with TPOX to prevent the progression. Uh, you'd also want to be able to immunize them if they were not infected because the vaccine would provide long-term immunity. And so we've been focused on that. We have a program with the U.S. Department of Defense. It's about $26 million of R&D funding. And we're doing two clinical studies that would allow an intervention that would say you can get vaccinated and start TPOX therapy at the same time. That way, if you're infected, um, you wouldn't progress to severe disease. And if you weren't infected, the vaccine would provide some long-term immunity. So uh, we're essentially doing a clinical study now to show we don't interfere with the vaccine response and um, that we can show extended safety for 28 days instead of the standard 14 days. So that would allow a one-stop shop for an intervention. We think about what's happened in monkeypox, people are trying to do contract tracing. Should we give vaccines? Should we give drug? Uh, should, how, how aggressive we should be? This would be a solution, uh, especially in something as deadly as smallpox, that would be much more flexible uh, and effective as an intervention, as many folks have articulated. The reality is, if we use it prophylactically, we're going to use more drug um, in an outbreak. We're going to need more treatment at the very least to maintain what the U.S. government has long stated as a requirement of 1.7 million people to treat, uh, we would need twice as much drug because the treatment would be twice as long. So certainly from a business opportunity, we think there's a, a, a substantial opportunity to right size uh, the requirement um, uh, to be able to maintain 1.7 million courses. And, I, and I'd go back to our original contract in 2011 um, there was originally, in the original solicitation, a concept of up to 12 million courses, uh, citing post-exposure prophylaxis, a multi-city outbreak as part of the justification. So the government certainly has looked at these requirements, and in the era we're in with global conflict, we think certainly smallpox, monkeypox uh, are critical things that all nations need to be prepared for. So uh, PEP is a key part of that, to not only think about treatment, but how to make sure people don't progress to disease that may have been infected. Okay, so if we kind of wrap this up, are there, what are the um, key milestones and catalysts that investors should be looking for in the next maybe 12 to 18 months? Yeah, so let's, you know, let's start with our base business. We have uh, an anticipation of two uh, over $112 billion orders from BART over the next couple of years to resupply the US stockpile. Um, so we certainly would look for milestones of those orders coming in to basically take the option on the contract. Uh, we anticipate we'll continue to have international sales. So stay tuned for where we're able to continue to get sales, both for monkeypox and the broader smallpox preparedness. Uh, the PEP clinical studies um, will have enrollment finished this fall and start to get data on the uh, immunogenicity of Genios with and without TPOX to show we don't interfere with that. So that's a set of milestones. Um, we also have a broad set of placebo-controlled studies uh, for treatment of monkeypox. And so the US NIH, uh, the UK, uh, as well as Canada, Democratic Republic of Congo, Europe are all looking at doing those studies. And as those studies come out, um, that will give us an opportunity to get a much more traditional approval uh, here in the US for treatment of monkeypox. And depending where the outbreak goes, um, we will certainly be looking at getting access to patients through uh, traditional commercial sales channels. So there's going to be a need for that. Uh, products come out of the stockpile during outbreaks, but the U.S. government will not want to supply this uh, in the long term. We'll have to go through uh, traditional sales channels, insurance, and the like. So it's a new opportunity for SEGA. Um, uh, uh, unfortunately, this outbreak looks like it will continue, and that gives us an opportunity to be not only a uh, health security government focused uh, business, but also now a commercial business. So we'll be focused on that as well. Phil, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I think that was super helpful. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Thanks so much, Sue. Take care.